Hey, what's up? My name is Dahoud Hidami. I am a proud New York real estate agent, co-founder and principal of the Catalyst team at Compass. And welcome to a New York conversation where we talk to some of our notable New York friends about their New York and, and uh, where we also get to hear about the small businesses that they support. This week, we have a special guest, Linda Powell who uh, has graced uh, Broadway and off-Broadway stages, uh, including uh, Wilder, Wilder, Wilder on Golden Pond, A Raisin in the Sun, Angela's Mixtape, and one of my favorites, The Christians. Um, so without further ado, I am going to uh, get you on here, Linda. I'm going to sit and... Uh, and I think that should do it. What's up? Hi. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much for taking time out of your uh, busy day to uh, speak with us. Uh, about I love your you. <laughs> I love it too. Can you hear me all right? Because my air conditioner is on and it's like. Yeah, totally. Okay. No, I, right. I can hear you just fine. Um, what is up? So we met each other, I guess, a while ago. Was it at the Christians or was it before that? I think it was at the Christians. I think that's the first time we met. We yeah. Met. And then you... we've just overlapped in so many ways since then, I feel like. Yeah, I agree. We've done multiple readings and just, uh, I think we just have multiple friends in common, uh, including Emily Donahoe, who actually wants me to suggest to you that maybe one of the best things about living in New York for you is your friendship with her? Is that a... Is that what she said? That's what she said. Well, then I guess I have to agree. <laughs> I have to agree because if I don't, you know how mean she can be. <laughs> she, she, would, she would hunt me down. She would too. <laughs> you gotta be careful. Uh, no, well, I saw like one of your first, one of the first lives you did was with Emily, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You gotta, yeah. They, Emily and David were my first two because, you know, Grad school OGs. Oh yeah, that's right. You all guys, uh, guys all went to uh, grad school together. You've got yes. that bond. Yeah. That, that trenches, being in the trenches <laughs> together. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, you you have been uh, really successful in New York on on the stage and on TV and film. Can you give me a, uh, an idea of what's a what are some of your recipes for success in your craft? How, how have, can you define that in any way? You know, I, I think the, the folks that have the kind of careers that I want to have are people who, who do work because they love the work mm -hmm. and the success comes along with that, but the success is never the point of that. You know, I've just always loved to act yeah. know, since, I was a, since I was a kid and, and telling stories and, and putting myself into stories. And so I find that people who, who are interested in doing the work, in connecting and in finding the truth and the material they're working on, the success comes because the work is good, hopefully. And, and what do you mean, can you, can you delve in just a little deeper about, what do you mean by the work? Um, getting together in a room with people to try and find the best way to tell a story that's gonna touch people. That's mm. the work. That's lovely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and sometimes that's a room with a lot of cameras in it, and sometimes it's a dusty room uh, in the middle of a really bad neighborhood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. So uh, how did you end up here in, in New York in the first place? I, I uh, uh, well, my dad is from New York. My dad was born in Harlem, and he was raised in the South Bronx, and I grew up coming to New York um, for holidays, like, Christmas, Thanksgiving, my, my Jamaican grandparents lived in, the, in uh, Queens in a house that they won by playing the numbers. Oh, uh, really? uh, the house that they paid for by playing the numbers. Uh, that's how they mean? got the down payment. They, got a, they won a lottery? Well, a, a, they, a bookie, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was a kind of lottery. Um, yeah, so that that's uh, I grew up coming to New York, but not to not to the city. It was just straight to my grandparents' house in Queens, 
and parties with relatives and holidays with relatives and then back in the car back usually to I mean, I'm an army brat so grew up all over the place but uh, often in the Virginia DC area and um, I ended up going to college at William & Mary in Virginia oh. Oh. and about you know, sophomore year junior year when you have to start picking a major and saying what you're going to do with the rest of your life <laughs> I decided <laughs> that I was going to give acting a try and um, I felt I needed more training so I auditioned a lot of places, including all the fancy grad schools, like the one that you and Emily went to. <laughs> but I didn't get in. I got into one place, Circle in the Square Theater School <laughs> hey. in New York, New York. Yeah. So I went to Circle in the Square Theater School in New York, New York. And um, it's one of the best things that ever happened to me, the, the family I made there, the connections I made there, the training I made there. And um, I've been in New York ever since. And when you moved, uh, you, did you move from Virginia to New York to go to Circle and Square? Uh-huh. I came and I lived in Fort Greene, but it was Fort Greene in 1987 um, 80, to 89. It was, oh. not, <laughs> it was not, it was great, but it was not the Fort Greene of, of, the, of the glossy movies right now. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So you got to remember what you paid in your rent, right? I, I, we had a two... A two floor, first two floors of a brownstone uh, facing the park, Washington Square Park. Yeah. I don't know why this number's in my head, but I think thirteen hundred dollars for the whole thing. Yes. And we split it among we split it among four of us. <laughs> <laughs> That's a. Yeah, and then after that, I moved. Like uh, all the roommates, we cycled roommates in and out for a little while and then it, it all just fell apart. So I gave up the lease and then I was homeless for a while and I slept on Ibby Janko's floor in an apartment. Uh, do you know Ibby Janko? I don't know him personally, but I, I know I know who Ibby Janko. I think she's <laughs> Ibby somebody else now, but uh, I slept, she let me sleep on her floor for a whole summer, uh, a studio, uh, like in the Lincoln Square, Lincoln Center area like one of those weird tall buildings and then i moved in with a f with uh, a room opened up in a share on um amsterdam between 83rd and 84th and i lived there for a while nice. and then i went to work for an eccentric billionaire and he <laughs> let me stay in a studio apartment in a brownstone in exchange for um taking care of the other apartments and i that's how I saved up enough money that I bought an apartment when I was uh, too young to buy an apartment, but I did it on 80th and uh, Columbus. So, and that, yeah, and that, and yeah. I, I remember we went to see, uh, we went to see the courtroom, and uh, right, and you were talking about. Your, yeah. I remember yeah. the conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my That's, God, the courtroom! That was like right as COVID was hitting. That was the last theater that we, uh, at least that we all saw. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. That's I, the last live performance I did. It was crazy. Yeah. That was, that was so good too. So good. Um, you so, know, you talked to Arian the other day. Arian, uh, we, and um, Kathleen, who you yeah. talked to last week, we all uh, worked on uh, doing a movie of the courtroom. In January, oh. we worked on filming it. So it hopefully, I don't know what's the plans for it or how it's going, but uh, it was a, it was a great experience. We filmed out at uh, St. Anne's Warehouse. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah, very cool. That's very nice. When oh, so we don't know when. No, it's... I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. That's that's wild. I'm so happy and thrilled for y'all that you're able to put it on film because it is a story that needs to be seen by more than just theater goers because it's a universal story. Yeah. Um, it's so poignant. I remember leaving there going, whoa, <laughs> that was, it's, uh, the justice system is so, needs to be uh, looked yeah. at. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So you kind of, you are a New Yorker. You've kind of been around. You've, I am. Mm -hmm. And when I first got here as, uh, you know, in my, 20s I everybody said it's going to take you a while to get used to it yeah but it did not take me a while to get used to it I kind of felt like you know having never felt like any one place was home I got here and I went oh this this is home this yeah. is home yeah do yeah. you have do you have a favorite uh New York corner a corner yeah 
uh, 42nd and that weird street that comes in from the tunnel. Dyer? Oh, yeah. 42nd and Dyer. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> so much of my life has been spent on that block. Remember when I used to have the theater row theaters on that block? Yeah. Are so they still there? I've done, well, I mean, before they knocked them down and built prettier theaters, there were these really oh. decrepit theaters on that block that I did so many showcase shows in with my friends. And then I did the Christians <laughs> on that block with Emily. There's that great diner on that block that after shows, you go in that diner or in your break, you go in that diner. What's you've Bank got Bank? the... Um, West Bank is right across the street. Is that the diner you're referring to or a different? No, no. Well, the West Bank is the restaurant right across yeah. the street that, it, that, that I love and hang out at all the time. But then there's this diner that I don't know the name of that is right exactly on that corner. That's classic New York diner. Awesome. Yeah. I hope they're still around. We'll, uh, I'll look them up. I'll yeah. see. And then also, like, when you're driving into the city, when you hit that block, you're home. Oh, yeah. You're you right. come through the tunnel and then you're like, oh, I'm home. You come, you <laughs> tunnel. you're home, you do your play and boom, you're done. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's great. So I guess, I guess the answer to why did you come to New York was through for your craft, really. Yeah. Right? And, was uh, I, you know, a couple of times people are like, oh, do you want to go out to LA, 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 la. And I go out to LA every now and then to work, but um, I just feel more centered here. Yeah. yeah. What, why? What do you, what is it that, that? I think some people are city people, I guess. I, you know what I love is um, that not, there's so many different types of people here. Like yeah. you, you can go someplace and not be only talking to, to somebody about what it is that you do and the, and the world that you're in, but you can talk to somebody about, you know, anything there's so many different yes. professions and interests and you can be crazy here and your crazy is not going to stick out you know <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what i love about it you can you can you can you can be anonymous in this city in a way that's really kind of great for an artist i think yeah that's a that's a really good point um was there was there a diversity wins <laughs> marina saying <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, Hi, honey. So the the thing about this that's um, is, is this, which is that, like, was there a, something um, magical that happened? Was there a specific moment, or was it a progression that made you fall in love with New York? No, I think it was right away. I, I think there's places that you're supposed to be. You know, mm. when I was a kid, you remember those Fisher Price toys? Yeah. I remember they had the the village, and there was there was a there was an apartment in the village, <laughs> and I used to like really think it was cool that you could live above a store. Like all my life, we lived in suburbs and army bases, and like never in a city or anything. But like even as a kid, I was like, yeah, one day I'm gonna live above a store. <laughs> it's like such a city city desire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's so funny because growing up and you moved around a lot, right? That's yeah, the, yeah. And and what was that like um, before? You know what? There were moments. Mostly, it was just like life. It was like what you what you expect. I mean, this is it's life, so you don't have anything else to compare it to. Yeah. Um, I end up having just luck of the draw, going to three different high schools, and I'm not gonna lie, that was that was not fun. I did not do that graciously, um, <laughs> <laughs> but. In retrospect, I I love the way I grow up. And in, in retrospect, I feel like it gave me like a real perspective on different ways that people live and different places in the country um, that I'm glad that I have. Yeah. So you you discovered a lot actually of different ways people live before you came to New York. Mm -hmm. In, in, yeah. in a way which in some ways maybe solidifies your New York even more, right? Because you're, you're not someone, you've kind of experienced a bunch of- You know what I just, I never thought of this until you just put that that way. It's like when we would move, there would be a struggle to figure out the rules of the place. You know, how, what are the rules of this place? What, what do I, what do I, how am I supposed to talk here? 
who are, how do people, you know, in every place you kind of figure out what the rules are. And in New York, it just feels like you, you have your own rules and there's not so much pressure to like um, fit into something else. It's just everybody being themselves. Hmm. So there's this authenticity that is present when looking. Yeah, I feel like there is. Yeah. Um, okay, so going back to what made you fall in love uh, in New York, I think I took it, I, I sideswiped it <laughs> okay. in a different direction. Um, so yeah, were you, did you have a, a progression or was there um, a moment? Was there a, a thing that was like, you know what? Was there a, a gig that you got that made you maybe go, you know, I, I, I can't believe I made it here or <laughs> was there, was there uh, um, towards the end of, uh, you know, right after Circle, I ended up becoming a part of a theater company called the Willow Cabin Theater Company. And we did a whole bunch of shows together for about what, 10 to 15 years right after that, you know? What was, what was that company? Uh, Willow Cabin Theater Company. Um, um, we were young and we did every, you know, we were hanging the lights, we were running the box office, we were doing everything. And I remember one night, uh, I think it was my birthday and we'd just done a show about French resistance fighters in the Holocaust <laughs> in a part in a in a theater in Tartu which doesn't exist anymore it was a really like dusty place <laughs> towards 11th Avenue and um I came out of the building we were sitting on the steps and um my castmates had, had bought a cake and we were sitting on the steps of this decrepit building and you know forty like forty fifth and eleventh or something weird like that, or between tenth and eleventh, and it was late, and the moon was out, and they were singing me happy birthday, and I remember thinking, I need to remember this moment for the rest of my life because this might be one of the one of the best moments I have, and it was oh. such a New York moment, yeah. It, a lot of those New York moments for me are tied up to the theater, which I just think is such a vibrant part of of what New York is and what yeah. makes New York special. What yeah. was what was magical about that moment? Was it the the, the people that you were surrounded with? What? It was the people, it was the moon, it was the smell of the city at that moment. It was like Ooh. a little, a little human and you know how it gets that aroma. And <laughs> um, <laughs> just the, just the, um, the energy of the moment is a very like uh, the energy of the city sometimes and the energy of that moment just felt yeah. like so magical to me. Was this uh, was this after Circle in the Square? So you Yeah, right after. Right after. So these were probably people that you met from Circle in the Square or were they the um, They were rooms? all students of the same the same teacher. Um, we all were studying under this guy, Ed Berkeley, who actually passed away last week and um oh. Uh, just amazing, amazing teacher, and he was the artistic director of our theater company, and and a good friend, and uh, kind of made us all family by putting us together in that situation. Oh, yeah. That's... Sorry. Yay, Ed! Yay, Ed! <laughs> <laughs> and that's um, that's such a, a wonderful. Um... But I mean, when you're like talking to me about like real, yes, Glenn. Hi, Glenn. Uh, real uh, New York moments. Um, when I try and think of them, they're all, all these theater moments come into my head. They're all like theater moments that come into my head. Yeah, you know? that's interesting. Um, and and but it's not. What's interesting to me is that you're not thinking about the the TV or film studios or because when you're shooting movies, you're going to Astoria or you're yeah going, yeah. <laughs> and I I love doing TV and film, but it's it's a different it's a different. Um, it's a different muscle, it's a different energy, it's a different, it doesn't have the same, um, I don't know, I'm not as romantic about it as I am about the theater. Yeah, no, yeah. that's the <laughs> <laughs> same way. My high school theater teacher, God rest his soul, told me, at, and when I was in high school, he's like, theater is love, TV and film is money. Yeah, and, and that, TV and film supports my theater habit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you go. So I, I have been getting some, some like, oh, Emily wrote a film that uh, this has been kind of magical about um, my friends and colleagues during COVID finding ways to do work, which I think is just, um, 
been really inspiring and they asked me to come play, which is great. Um, so sometimes you do do something magical that's on film and television, but, and sometimes it's a paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> Can you talk a little anything? Can you reveal anything about that project at all? Or are you Emily's? Just, yeah. Um, it's a short film. Emily's in it and Michael O'Keefe. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna wait because I don't want to. I don't want to say anything I shouldn't say. Yes. I don't. I don't. I don't know how much plot is I should say or not. Say. Can you can you give me a little bit of taste of who you what your role is? Yes. No. Okay. Deal. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Jeremiah a minute ago. I'm not sure if he's still here, but uh, uh, he directed it, and he's probably laughing at me right now. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's Jeremiah Kip. For those yeah. who don't know, is a brilliant. Uh, uh, film director and just a um, he's a fan of films and I love that if you uh, join his follow his, him on Instagram it's, it's yeah you get a little film education when you follow Jeremiah <laughs> yeah um, did it so uh, so it sounds like it didn't take you long to get acclimated to the city at all no not to get acclimated to the city it took me a long time to to start <laughs> he is laughing he says he's oh. laughing it took me a long time just to to start working as an actor, yep. I didn't really start working steadily. I mean, thank God for the friends I was doing plays with because it probably took 15, 16 years before I felt like I could pay my bills as an actor. Mm -hmm. um, so I loved the city. I always loved the city. Sometimes like keeping the faith is a little hard, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and how was that through, did you, were you here? Uh, did you say, were you around? COVID? Yeah. Um, uh, when it first hit, I went down to DC, Virginia, because, you know, my parents are in their 80s, and I was like, okay, I want to be close to them with this thing going around. Yeah. Uh, so for the worst of the New York um, time, I was not here. I was down in Virginia. Um, watching people talk about the New Yorkers who fled and thinking, I still, I'm still a New Yorker. <laughs> um, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and in a strange way, wishing I could be here to be like with my city. Um, yep. So I was in Virginia and then I came back here and uh, it's been uh, um, TV and film stuff, uh, theater I still worry about and I worry about now with the Delta stuff coming, whether the reopening of stuff is gonna go as smoothly as we hoped. Yeah. Um, but TV and film, with all the protocols and stuff, we've been able to keep working, which has been great. It, it has been, and and things are opening back up. And I mean, like I took the subway back from downtown today. I took the B train, and it felt like every. I mean, it was kind of like I was like, there's a lot of people. Yeah, there. I was on the two train today, and I I can still count on probably maybe three hands how many times I've been on the subway. <laughs> oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah, and it used to be like two, three subway rides a day, but I'm, I'm slowly getting back on. So yeah. I, was on, I was on the two train today. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, it just takes uh, doing it once or twice, three yeah, times. Yeah, it's like, okay, this is okay. And then you realize, okay, we're, everything's, everyone, usually a majority of people wear masks, and uh, if they Everybody. don't, yeah. then if they don't, and this is the thing I love about New Yorkers, they're like, hey, Hey, you, put on your mask <laughs> put on, and they'll call you out for it. Or if there's a musician or, or I've seen this happen a couple of times where a musician comes on and they're not wearing a mask and they're singing and everyone's like, yo, put on your mask. <laughs> so so the, the city is, is slowly starting to, to open back up and a big part of why we're doing this New York conversation series is to do exactly why you came on, which is to support our, our small businesses. So, so tell us a little bit, give us some uh, small businesses that you love and you want to support because what we're going to do is we're going to tag them uh, when we repost this uh, with, with a little bit of Linda love. Okay. I want to, I Actually, I'm not sure they, they're on Instagram, but I want to give some Linda love to um, Upper West Side Yoga Studio, which is the tiniest, crunchiest, wonderful yoga community and really struggled once everything shut down and quickly started making themselves an online presence and have started now to open back up again. And they are wonderful. I uh, want to shout Linda, out. Yeah. You, you, uh, you the, 
the there was some kind of short circuit right as you said their name. What was it again? Upper West Side Yoga Studio. Oh, okay. Upper West Side Yoga. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Love, Love them. Uh, Chibo and Vino is my neighborhood restaurant, and uh, <laughs> they closed down and. Uh, uh, they bump. ended up, they ended up, no, they, they opened back up again, but they closed down for COVID and then ended up getting a contract to provide meals for um, some city workers or hospital workers, or I'm not sure, which kind of kept them going. And now they're open again and they're lovely. They own the uh, Chibo, you know, and Marlo are the same people. And uh, good food, good I'm atmosphere, pumped. good people. Uh, Amazing. Soho Rep. I want to shout out Soho Rep. Does that count as a small business? I think, you, I think you told Kathy Chalfant that theaters could count. Absolutely, 100%. Because yeah. I love what they did, because they, uh, when COVID hit, they, they, they decided to support artists. And I think they hired like eight uh, artists, put them on salary with benefits for what? the year. Yeah, that's what they did. Wow. Put their, put their money where their mouth was and, and helped some people out and gave them the ability to work on projects that are um, being presented by Soho Rep, but paid them a, a regular salary and gave them benefits while they did it. Oh, that's so amazing. I thought that was pretty cool. That was, that's amazing. I Pond love- Farmley Market, my uh, Mark, uh, little uh, deli right across the street, always open, always ready. Good uh, coffee beans. Uh, soup What's kitchen next called? door to me, doing good work. Advent, Advent Church, I think it's called. The church on 93rd and Broadway, awesome. lying around the corner, and they and they serve twice a week. So, shout awesome. them out. Yes. I guess that's all I can think of. Um, uh, take care of the theater kids is what I'm seeing. <laughs> <laughs> take care of the theater kids, so oh, rep. We do, we do, they do. Um, okay, cool. So thank you for that. I will, I I will repost uh, the. The, these these fine like, these are the people in my neighborhood yeah i love it um <laughs> so before we go we're gonna play a fun word word association game where i just say a couple of words or a word and you tell me you know uh uh first thing that comes to mind i might even add a little bit more small businesses here so just just as, okay. a, just as a heads up so New York favorites, right? So let's just start with bar, restaurant. West Bank Cafe. West Bank Cafe. Park. Central. Why? Because it's right here. It's right here. <laughs> <laughs> is, there, is, there, um, is there a specific part of Central Park that you, you love? You, you know, oh, um, you my, know boyfriend, used, my yeah. boyfriend used to always make me go, say, walk through, um, Seneca Village, where Seneca Village used to be in the park. So I have to say the Seneca Village spot, you know, nice. where the black community was before Central Park took over. Yes. Yeah. And I like that the upper, the upper, um, it's not the reservoir, but like the pond that's up towards the top. Mm -hmm. okay. up, in the north, up in the north part of the park. Yeah. I love that. Everybody has their special spot in the park. Like I live by Fort Tryon Park. And and I love there's a there's one of the highest points of the park where you oversee the Hudson River and you just watch the sunset, birds like it's it's really magical and amazing. I we're very very lucky you and I to live near parks. Very lucky. I'm actually I have Riverside pretty close too, which is pretty amazing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, I have my choice. Yeah, um, favorite speakeasy. Speakeasy joint. <laughs> How about smoke? 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 Yeah, it's a jazz club. I'm not sure it's still open. It's a jazz club on the uh, uh, Upper West Side. Okay, that that will do. I love <laughs> smoke. I don't know that I've ever been there. Um, subway line. Number one, two, three. There you go. Uh, you can perfect. get anywhere. You can get anywhere. One, two, three. <laughs> Uh, burger joint. Um, five napkin burger. Oh, interesting. Tasty. Tasty. It's classy. Yeah, five napkin burger. <laughs> um, favorite place to take a tourist. Broadway. 
the Broadway theater. Yeah. Amazing. Take him to a show. Take him to take, dinner and a show. Take him to a show, and that's it. I love that. <laughs> um, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna end it with one last one. But before I do, I just want to thank you uh, so much for your time. Thank and, you, Dawood. And I really, really appreciate all of the love and support you're giving. Um, you know, New York and these small businesses. Uh, it, I, I, you know, we hope to make an impact in in other ways besides the way you give with your craft and your art. So, so thank you for that. Thank you, darling. So give me your weirdest New York sighting. Yoga class at Reebok, back when it was Reebok, at big Reebok on 60, on Columbus and 67th. It was in the eighties, I think. And um, late eighties, early nineties, I don't know. I was, it was a big class, you know, it was like a hip gym. Yes. And um, I was there feeling not so hip and I was lying on the floor and the teacher was saying, everybody let out a moan, let out a moan. It was like, not an acting class, a yoga class, but I'm like, okay. So I moan and the person next to me moans and we're like the only people really that really did the moan. Yeah. So then we both started laughing. <laughs> So I turned to, 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 to make eye contact with, with the person, and it was John Lithgow. <laughs> <laughs> and so John Lithgow and I just lay next to each other laughing. Oh, my God. That's and, a New York story. And, dude, that's so amazing. It's so wonderful. <laughs> you're, getting, you're getting love from uh, the, the awesome... From the awesome Goodman. Goodman yeah. And, <laughs> and, uh, and yeah. my friend Cynthia. That's my friend Cynthia. I'm going to shout out her small business, Violets of Blue Beauty. Um, oh. Clean skin care. She's hot shit. Check it out. Oh, awesome. Violets of <laughs> Blue Beauty. What? Skin care? Yep. Amazing. Okay. Wonderful. Linda, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Guys, you. My pleasure. Thank you all for joining us. Um, join us here every Tuesday, 7 p.m. <laughs> Eastern. Uh, we're going to continue the series where we, we continue to talk uh, with amazing, notable New Yorkers. If, if you don't live in New York, come, come support us. <laughs> if you do live in New York and you're a New Yorker, support your local businesses uh, like Linda and I are doing. Thank you all so much. We'll see you uh, next Tuesday. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Linda.